In 2009, the National Research Council uh, from the United States uh, released a pretty scathing report on the science behind forensics, okay? Meaning there wasn't a lot of science behind the forensics. So my colleagues and I have recently published two high-profile papers uh, advocating that forensic entomology, okay, and understanding how insects and microbes drive the decomposition of, of vertebrate carcasses, human cadavers how we should or perhaps can move forward in a more scientific uh, fashion using basic science and ecology and evolution to drive our understanding and application in forensics. One of the most recent studies that, that we've been doing is um, understanding how microbial communities, insect communities interact to decompose vertebrate carcasses. What we specifically want to understand is, can we use the microbial communities to determine how long the carcass has been dead? Today, we will go out two hours before sunset. We will take newly euthanized swine uh, that we purchased from a local butcher. Um, we put those out all at the exact same time, and we have six of them. So for three, we allow open access from insects. So there's no uh, netting that limits blowfly access. On three others, uh, we put these large exclusion netting uh, nets up to exclude any kind of blowfly activity so that we can just understand how the microbial communities contribute to decomposition of the carcasses. And then daily, for the next uh, 10 days, we will take microbial samples. Uh, we put up sticky traps to monitor the blowfly populations that are attracted to the carcass and uh, ultimately um, we will take off the exclusion nets, allow the insects back access, continue to sample for the microbial communities, continue to sample for the blowfly communities, ultimately using more sophisticated analyses, understanding how those communities interact, and then determine postmortem interval estimates. The other issue is uh, oftentimes in murder investigations, the uh, criminal has murdered someone, they somehow um, retard invertebrate colonization, blowfly uh, colonization, wrap them in plastic, put them into um, plastic bags, wrap them in carpet. And so what this experiment uh, will also answer this week is if you eliminate blowflies from initially colonizing, how does the microbial community proceed? Okay, And then you allow the blowflies back in five days after death now what does the evidence say? How long has that individual been dead? Uh, if you just use insect evidence. So that's what we're trying to do with forensic entomology. How do microbes at the basic level affect blowflies when they come together? How do those interactions drive the decomposition of a human corpse? So that we can now refine those estimates, know that if you change temperature or you get a major rainfall event, that's gonna affect the microbes, it's gonna affect the insects, that's gonna change what your evidence should look like. The most exciting and most fulfilling part of my job um, as, an, as an assistant professor is interacting with students, uh, undergraduate students, graduate students, watching them mature as scientists and as people uh, as they work in my lab, getting to know them as people, and then ultimately seeing them five to 10 years out um, in the workplace or as colleagues, which has happened several times. Um, that's what really drives me in this.